Hello and welcome. In a previous video we've begun to look at inheritance in inheritance 1 and we looked at how to write the code for subclasses and superclasses using inheritance. So in this video we're going to look at how do we declare and create instances of those objects so that we can use them in our applications. In the previous example we had looked at this idea of a manager and employee relationship where an employee was the superclass and manager was the subclass because a manager inherits all of the same attributes as an employee but also has additional attributes such as department name. So you'll see here when we try to create an instance of the manager object it works in the very same way as we would have done before. Manager M equals new manager. Now the data that we're feeding in here into the constructor obviously includes some data members that we wouldn't have declared necessarily within the manager class but they would have been declared in the employee class so it's perfectly fine to do so when we pass them in here it will go to the manager class and then they'll be sent up using the super keyword to the constructor of the employee class so that's fine you'll see when we come to using the methods then we can call the get name and get salary methods which were declared in the employee class using the manager object M. So that's perfectly fine also. And then of course, as always, when we want to use the methods from the manager class, those are available to us as well. The best way I think to understand this will be to look back at our example. So in the last video, we looked at an example where we had assessments and we had different types of assessments. All assessments had a name, a type and a weighting, but then projects had a name, type, weighting and deadline and tests had a name, type, weighting, number of questions and duration. So projects and tests were the subclasses and assessment was the superclass. So we'll take a look back at the NetBeans code for that and I think in that example we also went on to look at Moodle tests where we had a further subclass of test. So Moodle test was a subclass of test which had more attributes again. So we'll take a look at that example now and we'll look at how do we declare and create instances of each of those objects and use some of those methods. So here's our example from earlier. <coughs> You'll see we have project, test and Moodle test, all of which are subclasses. And we have assessment, which was our superclass. And if you want to have a look at the development of this application, you can look back at inheritance one. If we go into assessment app then, the first time we started looking at this example, we had declared an instance of assessment called A, so an instance of the superclass, and we had assigned the values to the, the um, instance of assessment using the set methods because we used the default constructor to create it. Then we went on and we used the overloaded constructor to create another instance of assessment called B, and we assigned the values directly there using the constructor and then we went on and used the met the getters to print back out the contents of that object so now in a similar fashion we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a new instance of the project class called p okay and in the project class you'll note we didn't have um, a default constructor we only have an overloaded constructor and the rule is that once we add the overloaded constructor the default constructor is not added for us so when we create this object we're going to have to create it using the overloaded constructor so we do it as we always would have project p equals new project this remains the same okay because the overloaded constructor we have to put our contents directly into the brackets here the first thing that we were looking for was the name so OOP project the second thing it wants then is the type and this is continuous assessment the third attribute that this constructor expects is the weighting so it's 30% and finally then it's looking for a date for a deadline now the date class has two constructors one requires that you put in the date the month and the year which is straightforward enough three integers and the other requires that you put in the number of milliseconds that will pass between 1970 and this particular date and obviously I'm not going to get bogged down in the detail of that right now because this is not a video about the date class it's a video about inheritance so we'll go ahead and the unfortunately the constructor whereby you enter three integers representing date month and year 
it has since been deprecated so it won't always be available for use but it will work for this example and then you can explore the date class yourself in more detail later so because we want to use the date class we should declare a date object date d equals new date and in here then we feed in our our parameters so the 28th of February 2013 and then in my constructor for my project I can put D so you'll see now the word date has been struck through because um, it's deprecated and that's how NetBeans indicates to us that we have we're trying to use something that's no longer particularly advised but for this example it, it'll serve its purpose okay so we've got our new instance of project and now let's print the contents of that just to show that they've gone in so system dot out dot print ln p dot get name system dot out dot print ln p dot get type system dot out dot print ln p dot get waiting and system dot out dot print ln p dot get deadline okay now so that's our instance of project you'll see here we're using the get name the get type and the get waiting which were all outlined in assessment okay and then we're using the get deadline method which would have been outlined in the project class all right so let's play that there okay so our date isn't coming out exactly right but again that's not what we're concerned with at the minute really what we should be doing is using the number of milliseconds and we're not so we'll ignore that problem for now we'll address it in a later video okay um back into assessment app now and this for some reason keeps switching to append that should be print ln okay so back into assessment app now and we're going to do a new instance of the test class okay so the test class test t equals new test and again because we only have the overloaded constructor we have to fill in the details so I'm going to do op exam the type then is terminal exam the weighting is 70 and in this instance the test class is looking for num questions and duration so number of questions 10 and the duration 60 minutes okay and then as with the other system dot out dot print ln t dot get name system dot out dot print ln t dot get type system dot out dot print ln t dot get waiting system dot out dot print ln t dot get duration and finally system dot out dot print ln t dot get num questions okay and again if we play that OOP exam terminal exam waiting 70 60 was the duration and 10 is the number of questions okay so you can see we declare and create the objects just as we did before we put the so long as this data goes in in the same order in which it is in the constructor everything goes well you must keep the same order and it must be the same data types in the right order and the same would apply for Moodle test 
Moodle test m equals new Moodle test and we would feed in all of the information as we did in the constructor when we when we created the signature of the constructor. Okay. One final thing that's important to understand when we're doing inheritance is this idea of access control. So up until now, in the interest of encapsulation, we have made all of our data members private and we have made all of our methods public. But there are in fact more than just private and public. So you'll notice in my app class when I declare um, variables, I don't bother putting, well, I haven't used any particular variables here in the app class. But when we declare our variables in an app class, we don't bother putting private or public. So what happens then is it becomes default. So this table here is quite useful in terms of what exactly what is visible where, depending on what access control you use. So private means that, yes, it can whatever the data members, the method, if they're private, they can be seen within that same class, but not in the same package, not in a subclass in another package, and not available to the universe. If something is set up as default, okay, it's not quite the same as public or private. So yes, it can be seen in the same class and the same package, but not in the universe and not in subclasses of other packages. Protected is a new one and protected is known as the access control for inheritance, okay? Because if something is set up as protected, it can be seen in the same class, it can be seen in the same package, and it can be seen in subclasses that are stored in other packages. So really, in our superclass, our data members should be declared as protected when we're doing inheritance, particularly if your subclass and your superclass might reside in separate packages. And then public, of course, means that the data can be accessed just about anywhere. So we'll just pop back in and we'll just change um, in our assessment class, we'll change our privates to protected here. And that's all there is to it. Program runs as it always did. No differences, everything still works. It just, is, just makes things a little bit more secure. So your access controls are very important when thinking about inheritance. So do give some consideration at class diagram stage 